In this video, we will go for discussion of acceleration. First type of acceleration is called as tangential acceleration, which is normally represented by AT, is given by alpha times radius. Then we have normal acceleration or centripetal acceleration that is represented by AN, is given by omega square R or sometimes V square by R. Then we have Curly's component of acceleration. So we are not discuss this, we will prove it later on. So this is given by 2 times of V multiplied by omega. Here V means radial velocity and omega is the angular velocity. And then we have sliding acceleration in case of slider. Omega is sometimes written as theta dot and VR dot is written as R dot. AN is written as theta dot square R as it is. Alpha is written as theta double dot multiplied by R. Sliding acceleration is simply given by R double dot. So we have a slider here. Now consider here the link rotating. If the link is rotating above the hinge, then we have tangential acceleration and we have normal acceleration. And if we have a link rotating above the hinge and we have a slider on that one, then we have a curly's acceleration. And if we have a pure slider and the link is fixed and we have only sliding motion, then we have a sliding acceleration. Now consider here a link is hinge at this point O it is rotating at a constant angular velocity equal to omega. It means that the angular acceleration will be equals to zero. We know that alpha is defined as d omega by dt. But omega is constant, so derivative of omega is constant, so alpha equal to. So when we say uniform angular motion, there is no acceleration. Let's consider any point here at distance equal to r. Since the r is fixed, it has only experienced the normal acceleration. So this represents the direction of ar. This time ar is 0. This represents the tangential velocity that is v theta. We call it as vt or v theta. Is v theta equal to omega multiplied by r or theta dot multiplied by r. This one represents the centripetal acceleration equal to a n equal to theta dot square multiplied by r or v theta square by r. So anytime you want to find out the acceleration along the link, then only one compound will involve if omega is constant that equal to a n that is pure rotational motion. So this time a equals to a n is the total acceleration of a rigid link at point a. Now let us consider the same link, but this time we have a angular acceleration equal to alpha. And let's say the radial distance of the point A equal to R. So this time we have two accelerations. One is a normal acceleration and one is the convective acceleration that we called as tangential acceleration. Point A is fixed, therefore R dot is 0 and VR is also equal to 0 and R double dot is 0. So it does not have any type of radial acceleration outward. But we have a alpha value. So alpha multiplied by R will be called tangential value. This is also same as equal to V theta that is theta dot multiplied by r and a t will represent as a theta that equal to alpha multiplied by r equal to theta double dot multiplied by r is same as omega into r and alpha into r. In addition to this we have the centripetal acceleration. So this represents centripetal acceleration equals to a n which is equals to omega square multiplied by r or v theta square by r is same as theta dot square by r. So this time we have two component, one is a theta and one is a n. So resultant acceleration can be obtained by using the parallelogram theorem. So we have total acceleration is under root of v a theta square plus a n square. Now consider here a rigid link at a point a, but this time we will allow the point a to slide. So if the, suppose the point a is on the link, so, so during the angle time dt, the point will rotate about the point hinge. But if the point A has a translation motion also, that is all the point A will slide along the link A. So angular distance travel equal to theta equal to omega multiplied by t. We have a famous equation S equal to Vt. So we have theta equal to omega multiplied by t. Let's consider one slider and let's say this one is point. Suppose if I keep this point and overlap with the point A here and the slider is translation motion or the sliding motion along the link A. Let us assume that the slider has a translation motion outward. So actually the, the slider has to reach point A, but in the same time T, since it has outward velocity, it will not reach at point A. So it will try to move outward. So in the same time T, the, it will travel somewhere here, but this the slider is mounted on the link. So it must be on the link. So there must be some horizontal displacement cause. In the same time dt, the slider will travel a distance equals to v multiplied by dt. So when we are at the point A, the piston has to travel, the slider has to travel a vertically outward distance. So this outward distance will be equals to v multiplied by t. So in fact, the piston should be at this position, but the piston is always on the link. 
so some horizontal distance is traveled so this horizontal distance traveled is due to curvature component so whenever we have a slider and a link and the slider has a translatory motion then we always get curvature component of acceleration so we'll go for the derivation of this one okay let's consider a hinge at point o let we have point a on the link let's consider a slider and let's say the point on the slider is b so we'll place this slider and two points are overlap a and b are overlap a is on link and b is on slider let the point a as at a radial distance equals to r from point o along the link let's say the crank is uh, link is rotating at angular speed of omega in a clockwise direction let's show here one angular position at an angle equal to theta so point on the link a will be travel angular distance equals to del theta in time del t and del theta is given as omega into del t del t is a very very small interval of time so we can represent the point a on the link as a dash and we assume the slider is going outward so slider will cover the distance the new position of point a and that distance will be equals to v multiplied by 2b dash the distance will be equals to v multiplied by delta t but the slider has to be on the link so b dash will be the final position of a slider in the small interval of time del t at this point the angle subtracted by b dash b1 dash is same as del theta so this radius is equal to v multiplied by del t and the angle subtracted is del theta so the distance from b1 dash to b dash can be given as r into del theta that is v into del t into del theta so this is the horizontal displacement of a slider in the time del t now initially at point b we have x value will be uh, initial velocity along the x direction will be zero it has only y directional velocity v y we have a distance equals to b b dash equals to v multiplied by del t s equals to b1 dash to b dash that equal to v into del t into del theta but del theta equal to omega into del t so what we get is v into del t del theta is omega into del t is omega into del t now we have a famous formula for s equal to ux into delta t plus 1 by 2 ac into delta t square so we can put for s equals to v into omega into del t square initial velocity at the point a ux is 0 1 by ac square into delta t square will get cancelled that is how we get the equation of curvature component of acceleration equal to 2 times omega times v remember here v is the radial velocity that is outward velocity and omega is link velocity and velocity vector v and acceleration vector ac they are always perpendicular to each other so ac depends on two quantity link is fixed in that case ac will be equals to 0 see the shaper mechanism recall the shaper mechanism so your link is oscillating from one point to second point at extreme position the link will stop temporarily so it doesn't have any angular acceleration so that time the curvature component of acceleration will be equals to zero in a shaper crank mechanism that is a slotted lever mechanism so at these two extreme position the curvature component will be as equal to zero in the second situation if vr is equal to zero then also the curvature component will be equal to zero so that is possible if the crank is on the vertical position so when the crank is at vertical position the slider cannot go further so vr will be equal to zero or exactly opposite in downward direction it cannot go so we are equal to zero so at these two extreme position also the curvature component of acceleration will be equal to zero for rest all position the curvature component of acceleration will exist when we are is zero curvature is also equals to zero so for four position of crank slotter mechanism of a shaper machine four positions we have curvature component equal to zero rest for all positions the curvature component is always present the important points are ac and vr are always perpendicular to each other the direction of ac and vr we can obtain by rotating the vr vector through 90 degree in the same direction as the direction of omega so rotate vr through 90 degree in the same sense of angular velocity omega of the link let consider your four positions let's say this one is vr this one is also vr downward motion of vr so we have two cases of vr upward and two cases of vr downward let's say the crank is rotating clockwise in case let the crank is rotating in anti clockwise direction in case assume the crank is rotating clockwise that is to be rotated in 90 degree we we'll draw 90 degree and check this one is clockwise rotation. now in this case vr is upward and the direction of rotation of crank is uh, anti clockwise so you have to rotate your vector by 90 degree in anti clockwise 
so this represents the curlless component of acceleration in this case vr is acting downward and the crank is rotating in a clockwise direction so you have to rotate your crank in a clockwise direction so you first draw two vectors which is perpendicular this direction is anti clockwise so this is not possible it means that other 90 degree vector is possible so this is a clockwise rotation so this vector is equal to ac this fourth case we have vr is rightward so draw two vector first 90 degree now check the direction of the crank is an anti clockwise direction so anti clockwise direction so if this one is anti clockwise direction so that component will be ac component so this is how you can finalize your acceleration this one is clockwise clockwise since is not possible so cancel out this